What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. Today we're going to check out the PRS HDRX20, uh, which is this amplifier right here. A few years ago, PRS had the opportunity to examine and basically dissect one of Jimi Hendrix amplifiers, uh, the one that he in fact used during Woodstock, uh, which was a Marshall Plexi Super Lead. So this is the culmination of that you know, work, kind of trying to replicate and emulate the Jimi Hendrix tone back in the day. <laughs> Classic rock, you know, I love classic rock. Although on this channel, if you're familiar with it, uh, generally I'm looking at the modern high gain stuff. So this is kind of a departure from that, but certainly uh, classic rock stuff is in my blood. And it's something I really uh, enjoy listening to and uh, don't play it often enough, but I really like it. So yeah, uh, this HDRX20 is the 20 watt version, obviously. Uh, they also make a 50 watt and 100 watt versions of the same head here. Uh, this one has the... Uh, 5881 power tubes. It's got two of those, and then it has three 12AX7 preamp tubes. I guess they use those power tubes because they're kind of a lower output, which is more in keeping with what would have been used back in the day. Uh, this thing sounds great. So, a uh, really small form factor here. It's relatively light as well. Uh, I like this amp because it still has a lot of headroom. It still sounds very loud basically and it's got a decent gain structure to it as well uh, if you're looking for the high gain stuff that's not this you know check out one of my other videos but this one here this is for the people that like the classic rock stuff right the kind of lower gain uh jimmy was pushing the envelope obviously with his plane for sure but then also with his tone too i mean <clears throat> people trying to trace that tone for decades essentially and uh, some people come close but prs did a great job of really trying to encapsulate that for the everyday person you know the lay person who just wants to kind of sound like jimmy um, in their own way. This does a great job of it. So like I said, really small form factor, but uh, it just gets right to the point. You know, you don't have a ton of knobs. You don't need a ton of knobs. In this instance, it just kind of gives you what you're looking for kind of right off the bat. So let's just run through it really quick because I'm sure you've uh, seen some of this stuff before. Uh, just basically the knobs. Let's go through them. It's got presence, bass, mid, treble. There's a master knob here in the middle which was not used in the original amplifier. And then there's two channels. It's basically internally jumpered, so you don't have to do that with uh, a cable on the outside. It's two channels in one, essentially. Uh, you've got a treble volume and a bass volume, which are basically your gain and your volume knobs all in one. And you can kind of tailor them, mix and match to suit to kind of get the tone you're looking for, which is really nice because sometimes too many options is simply too much, right? And you get the option paralysis thing going. This just keeps it simple. You want a classic tone. You might want to sound like, you might want to play Jimi Hendrix type music, right? So this gets you there really quick. And uh, I like these knobs. These are my two favorite knobs on this amp. Um, I find that the bass, mid, and treble tone stack over here, it's effective, but it's not overly crazy one way or the other. Anything on the dial is basically usable, I've found, uh, which is really nice. So this just gives you the push you need, either in the bass or the treble, or kind of a mixture of both to get a little more gain out of it. And the master volume is great because you can kind of set your tone, set your gain structure, and then the, the master volume is kind of like an attenuator in a sense. You just set it to the volume you want in the room that you're in. So it's really great. A couple other features I want to mention about this too. Uh, there's two toggle switches on this amp. This one is the bright switch over here on the right hand side. I'd say they're kind of down or up. I don't know if that's off or it's just normal and then bright. Um, I guess on the higher wattage versions of this amp, the 50 and the 100 watt, there's a three-way toggle. So you get one more option with that, you know, whatever. Uh, and then this other switch here is called the uh, mid-high gain switch. So that just gives you a little more push, kind of like a tube screamer effect. It kind of seems to me that it kind of gives a little bit of a boost in the mids, the upper mid range, just to kind of put you more out there in the mix uh, and give you a little more push when you need it. Two things about this amp that you might want to know before you know buying it uh, there is no standby switch it's just power on power off do you need a standby switch i mean that's been debated for years online and people will swear that you do and others say they swear that you don't i'm not an electrician so i can't say one way or the other i'm not missing it you know basically i turn it on and if it's a tube amplifier i'm going to let it warm up for a couple of minutes anyways i don't care if there's a standby on it or not just keep your volume down master volume down let it warm up and then turn it up when you're ready to play so if that's a problem for you, you know, you might want to look elsewhere. Also, I would mention there is no effects loop in this amplifier on the back. So if you're somebody who likes to run your effects 
after the preamp section, you can't do that with this here. Uh, basically, you're gonna do what Jimmy did, what they did in the old days, which is you run all your effects directly in front of the amp, and uh, that's just how it works. That's what Jimmy did, that's what you can do if you care to. Also, you can also do what I'm doing here, which is basically, uh, I've got it mic'd here with an SM58 out of 57 today. I'm going into my DAW of choice, which is Logic Pro. There you can add effects in post if you want to, but just realize it's all gonna be post the power amp section, right? So it's, the entire amplifier is gonna give you your tone structure and then you can put your effects afterwards if you want to uh, digitally there. There's other ways to do it too, but I mean, if you're just looking for an effects loop to keep things simple, not here. Uh, not a problem for me, I don't really mind. And then what I'm doing today is I'm using a little bit of reverb from my atomic amplifier box. I did a video on this a while back. Just a little bit of reverb, just to give it some kind of breath to sound like it's in the room. Um, you know, I don't usually like to play completely bone dry. That's just me. So other than that, there's nothing else on this. I'm not doing any EQ, no compression, nothing else in post. So you're just hearing what I'm hearing here in the room. Uh, lastly, I'm running it with my Mexican Fender Strat here, 1990. That was the first year that they started making Mexican Strats, apparently. And I've got this loaded with Seymour Duncan single coils. Uh, I forget which one they are, Tone Stack or Super Strat Stack Plus. I don't know what the hell they are, but they sound good. So let's get back to some playing, and I'm gonna massacre some Jimi Hendrix stuff because, you know, that's what we're here to do today, right? <laughs> So what I thought I would do now is to basically uh, just run a quick sweep through with the treble volume and the bass volume knobs because I find that those two seem to be the most effective in kind of tailoring the tone and obviously the, the amount of gain that you're going to get out of it. So first I'm going to go with the bass all the way off and just sweep through the treble volume knob and give you a sense of what that sounds like now. Okay, so um, let's start it off at say uh, about 10 o'clock or so. Then we'll push it up a little bit. Let's go to, I don't know, noon, one o'clock. Let's do about one o'clock. A little bit more. Let's try three o'clock. Here we go. And lastly, let's dime it all the way down. Uh, full treble volume on now. Okay, now I'll do the exact same thing with the bass. Uh, so treble's back to zero. And let's kick the bass volume up to about, again, nine or 10 o'clock. You don't want it too low because you're just not gonna hear anything, so. Let's try, let's try 10 o'clock. All right, uh, it's a little bit quieter, a little less gain, obviously. So, you know, I don't know if that was originally channel one or channel two, I don't know how they were kind of laid out, but it's just a little bit quieter overall in the room. Uh, so let's go to now about one o'clock on this one as well. So bass volume at one o'clock. All right, then we're gonna go to uh, three o'clock. See how that sounds. And lastly, we're gonna dime it all the way down. Bass cranked. Yeah, and if you're looking to do some of the modern kind of clean tones, um, you can get some really nice cleans out of this amp as well. Turn down the volume, turn up your master, 
and you're good to go. So I'll do the same lick here in a couple different positions. I'm gonna skip the uh, bridge position because that's a little too bright for me, a little. So I'm gonna avoid that. So we'll go two through five. That's pretty much it. So the PRS, HDRX20, I had a lot of fun checking this amplifier out and getting those classic rock vibes for you know a couple of days. Uh, if you're interested in this amplifier, definitely hit that affiliate link down below. It won't cost you a cent. Take you right to the uh, Zounds website and you can check it out for yourself. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Until next time, I'm out of here. See ya!